Today we're going to review some of the new tiles that have been added to the GeoTiles update. So with Blender 3.3 we were given some cool new nodes that allow us to make some volumes um, with geometry nodes and then use those volumes and make them into meshes and then they look kind of cool as uh, patterns. So this is what we're going to explore today. So we'll see it's a little bit different than the other geo tiles that we have. We have our kind of tile um, geometry node modifier and then we have our pattern modifier. So by default when you drag it out it's just one. So because this is a volume it is uh, a bit heavy with the mesh but we can go over how we can manipulate that and change that. So this is just the wireframe of what the mesh looks like. So you can see it's fairly heavy so that's why I just had it as default you just have one tile. Um, we're going to turn that wireframing off now that we have a sense of what the uh, geometry is like and then we can um, change the density so we can add more tiles so let's just bump this up to four and we'll just make this a uh, three by three grid so we got some cool looking tiles already um, and then of course we can manipulate the tiles to be different so we have a bunch of different sliders over here which can drastically change the look of our pattern and our tile so very cool. Um, we've got, yeah, various uh, <laughs> sliders that will give us some interesting results. So we can play around with that and get some cool looking things pretty quickly. So something very different from what we started out. Let's just undo a few of those things. And now we're actually going to go kind of deeper into that node group. So when we are we have the uh, the tile modifier selected we're gonna go in here and we have this density volume so this is just kind of a, a combination of a few different nodes that make it easier to manipulate so right off the top of the bat we have the size so I would just recommend keeping that at one um, but you could change the size of the volume um, and then we also have the height. So there are two heights, the A height and the B height. So that's different by material. So if I adjust the A height, you should see the gold rising up. And if I adjust the B height, you'll see the opposite. So can make some interesting, cool looking 3D tiles just based off of those two things alone. And then we also have the resolution. So when I was talking about the density of the mesh or the complexity of the mesh this is what I was talking about so right now it's a 150 by 150 grid on the X and the Y axis and then we have a separate one for the Z so if I just drag this down you'll see that the tile is getting kind of more pixelated in a way um, which we actually can use to our advantage so when there's uh, fewer bits of geometry um, to look at we can actually add a subdivision and make it kind of a smooth looking pillow shape. So there we have a very different look from what we saw earlier. So that's pretty cool. Um, I would just recommend if you do boost this back up to like 150, you take the subdivisions off before you do that because then it can get pretty dense with the uh, geometry. And then we also have the Z resolution so that's basically just the resolution on the z-axis so if we turn this down you can see that we're losing our z geometry but you could use that to your advantage like i said so you can make that uh subdivided and it looks kind of like a cool looking effect and of course you can merge these things and you know mix mix uh, anything that you want so there's lots of possibilities with these new geo tiles um, I hope you have fun with them because I had fun kind of making them and I'm glad that the blender foundation keeps adding some cool things so uh, why don't we just play around with them more just to see what it's like so we'll just delete that and I guess let's try this one and let's just play around with some of these uh, parameters so we got some funky stuff going around there Distorting the inner circle, we can change that kind of center size, and you know we can rotate this if we wanted to, add some randomness to it. So yeah, we could really change how this looks. 
So another thing we're going to cover today is the square pattern modifier that we have here. So this is a simplified version of what we find in the other GeoTiles um, nodes. But uh, this is just more streamlined for these volumes. So we've got our grid size. So that's basically telling how big we want our entire grid to be. And then the density is how many tiles are in that grid. Um, and then we have the scale tile, so we can scale them down individually. And then we have this rotate tile instances. So you, what you want to do is make sure you set this to most likely 90 degrees or some sort of factor of 90. And then you can see here that uh, about half of those tiles have rotated by 90 degrees. So this is just a way to break up your pattern if you don't want something to be seamless, if you want it to kind of have a, a varied look to it. So you can change the probability of the tiles uh, rotating. So I usually leave that about 0.5 and then of course you can change the seed to change it up um, to your heart's content. So some interesting uh, things you can do with that. And then you have the offset slider. So if you want it offset on the X, you can do that. If you want it offset on the Y, you can do that. Um, the scale, you probably won't use the scale, um, but it is there for you to play with. If you wanted to, for instance, uh, maybe change the tile size and scale it on one of the axes like that for whatever reason. So yeah, that's just a little bit more in depth of this square pattern controller you got.